So welcome to, to this session of Inkai Talks. Uh, many of you will be already familiar with the uh, Inkai Talks. This is a Inkwahi series of webinars where we aim to connect our membership with the broader international higher education and quality assurance community and to discuss uh, today's pressing issues. Um, my name is Fabrizio Trefiro. I'm an Inkwahi board member. I'm head of international uh, stakeholder engagement and uh, quality reviews at ECTIS. ECTIS is the agency that manages the UK qualification recognition function. I will be your chair for today. Uh, so this session looks at one of today's uh, pressing issues, which is sustainability from a quality assurance perspective. So we will uh, focus specifically on the role that quality assurance can play to support higher education providers in contributing to the advancement of the sustainability agenda and uh, SDGs more generally. Uh, to, to inform our discussion, uh, we will be hearing from quality assurance experts with different experience of embedding SDGs related considerations in quality assurance processes and ultimately in the activities of higher education providers. So I'm delighted to introduce our four excellent panelists for today's session who will help us reflecting on these issues from different perspectives. Uh, Professor Angela Hu, um, she's Professor of Higher Education at uh, College of Education at National Change University in Taiwan. She was former uh, Executive Director of Higher Education Evaluation and Accreditation Council of Taiwan. Uh, one of the um, um, national accreditation bodies, and also uh, vice president of Hinkway and EPQN. Dr. Isaac uh, Galobardes, director of the National Quality Assurance Agency in Andorra, and adjunct professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University uh, of uh, uh, at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. Uh, Cairo Saleh Mohamed Sahari, uh, Deputy Chief Executive Officer at uh, MQA, the Malaysian Qualifications Agency. And Solange Pizaz, Executive Director at CTI, Engineering Degrees Commission. Uh, I hope that the English translation is, is, is okay. And the Vice Chair of uh, the European Consortium for Accreditation and former Director of International at the French High Council uh, for the evaluation of research and higher education, HRS. So I will invite each speaker in turn to briefly share their experiences and perspective on the topic, and then we will engage in discussion. Um, we will explore some of the issues, opportunities, and challenges. But before hearing from our speakers, a few words about housekeeping. We have muted all your microphones uh, to help with the smooth running of the event and your cameras have also been disabled. So we can't see you or hear you, but we are very keen to hear from you. So please do use the Q&A function to raise any questions you may have or any comment. This is really a great occasion to, ga to engage in conversations with colleagues and experts on a topical issues for, uh, for quality assurance and international uh, education. Also, the webinar will be recorded and it will be made available for free access after the event. Last but not least, I would also like to thank uh, the Hinkway Secretariat uh, who in the background are making sure that everything uh, runs smoothly. So without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker and um, I'll go with the um, alphabetical order. So Angela, uh, it will be you. Uh, you, okay. can share, you can share your PowerPoint. Okay. So uh, let, let me share my PowerPoints right now with all of you. So now it will be all right. Can you all see my screen? Yes. That's, that's perfect. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you so much. First of all, I think I would like to... Uh, uh, thank you, the Inquahi, give me this kind of opportunity to share uh, some of my research and then also some of my ob observations related to SDGs as well as the QA or even some global metrics. So the I mean, I try to focus on you know the something that um, probably is um, what exactly is that the. Uh, the metrics for SDG so far, and then how exactly is the quality assurance, particularly from the Taiwan University, how exactly is the response to this kind of the issues. And then I also try to think um, how exactly is the university, okay, through the uh, management as well as governance, okay, to see 
how to incorporate SDGs into their QA system. So um, that is what I try to uh, share with you today. I hope I could within probably 15 minutes to 20 minutes to share you the source key points. So first of all, because based on the in Kwahi, you know, uh, today's talk, uh, the things, so I try to um, address some issues. I think that's why we try to uh, exchange the idea on those things. First of all, it's about what is the QA mandates for SDGs? This is what we could discuss today. And also it seems it is that the mandates for quality assurance agency, national creditors or other um, uh, professional creditors. Well, how exactly is the standards in this that we should develop? And then how you will be relevant to the universal emission and visions. So that will be the second, you know, that I'm always thinking. And the third is how exactly if that should be implemented and then how will that be linked to the institutional governance? So, and finally is of course, we want to see any challenges and also let you announce what exactly I observed from the Taiwan University's perspective. So uh, based on, it means that the, the theme as well as some sub things and that's all sort of issues. I hope that I could try to uh, share you what exactly is that my comments, my observations. And uh, generally I think that I would like to share you about the context. Uh, um, in higher education as well as sustainability. As you know, after the 2000, um, the higher education is now moving to the very, very uh, globally competitive era and higher education expand, expanded and then some systems more marketized, uh, more, more marketizations. And so uh, it means higher education's uh, actually institution has been driven to focus more about accountability and then how to actually provide uh, the good um, you know, effective models for institutional governance. So basically you can see after the 2000 and the two metrics or two instruments has been used by most of the national government as a kind of policy uh, tools to regulate how exactly is that the university has been performed and then how exactly is that the university could really demonstrate the accountability. So of course, definitely is one is the rankings though. Um, some some system probably, or some university probably don't like that or do not agree with that, but they already developed a lot of the metrics and the QA system the same. So, I mean, after the pandemic, you see, um, Traditional mode has been discussed of the QA system. And so if you all uh, read that the uh, inquiries ISG, the 2022nd, okay, they try to focus on the three things. I think that the, also the quality assurance or even other uh, reviews or even the metrics have to respond to it. One is the diversifications. Okay, probably in uh, in for since the two thousand and the, some set of the standards has been there. But how exactly we could really respond to the diversifications of the higher education system, and then how exactly we bet we 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 reviews or everything that we done is really relevant to the job markets or even that the students needs. And another one is how exactly is the QA could really have the capacity, okay, to so respond to all the changes and then have this kind of transformative capacity to respond to all things. I mean, now that in uh, that already uh, in already emerged in the changing higher education system. So here it's a quite I mean, a lot of the uh, more and more system or even the researchers try to discuss that how would the research, the teaching quality, learning outcomes are quite relevant to SDGs. And then how exactly we could do through the uh, QA system or even through some global metrics. So uh, in Asia, okay, um, higher education system. Uh, what does the sustainability probably has been um, interpret? Um, as a matter of fact, this concept of sustainability seems to be uh, invisibly institutionalized, right? Though we don't, we probably done so many things, but that is actually relevant to SDGs. And also uh, more and more campuses already take some very, very for active initiatives, such as probably they may have to focus on the green campus and they focus on the social impacts. And then also they try to pay more and more attention to educational effectiveness, their governance over the student and outcome, the student employability, and et cetera. So higher education definitely means they being I mean, after you know, the 
two decades has been motivated also to develop a certain kind of strategy. That is actually relevant to the current issues and particularly you know, the SDG now since that's been published in 2015 by UNESCO. And you can see university actually, um, they do not stop. They just try to see what actually we could do since the 2015. And then also external um, you know, review system, including that uh, global rankings or even a national creditor. They all try to think about how exactly you could respond to that and what kind of metric could be developed in order to help the university actually could really know what exactly, okay, uh, some some strategies they could develop. So, so far, like the THG already published a ranking systems for impact uh, impact rankings and also the QS also published a sustainability ranking. And as a matter of fact, you know, in Kwahi Odo done something in 2019, we had a pilot study and also tries to, you know, uh, sketch certain kinds of the, um, you could see the standards within the dimensions that if the university really want to, or even a QA system where we use the SDGs performances of the university, those dimensions, I think they have to take into the considerations. So I think this is the Times uh, Impact Ranking and then published in 2019. And they try to focus on the four dimensions about the research, how they, how university actually, okay, published a paper, research project, and how is that relevance to SDGs and stewardship, of course, how exactly could use the, your, map, your your resources in very, very effective way in outreach because SDG can already dance along. They should actually work with other partners, particular partner, um, different stakeholders, okay, not just the university as well as the employers and teaching definitely. I mean, it's always been a core values for SDGs. How exactly you can in incorporate that or reform your curriculums and that a student really uh, understand what the SDGs mean and how they could really practice them as well, definitely the faculty member. But however, this kind of the ranking system, um, they use the cell reported, uh, uh, methods it means to universally you could apply voluntarily okay to see uh, uh to demonstrate your your sdgs performances and this is very interesting that i find in 2020 20, and based on the top 500 you can see many many asian universally actually already applied this and then up to 187 of the asian universally actually has been listed on uh 500 and the second is europe and then you could look at, because uh, from the Times, higher education impact ranking metrics, they would like the university ident identify uh, the best three okay, SDG things to perform well. So I try to calculate how exactly they, what kind of the top three, how many, uh, what, what are the top three they chose. Uh, very interesting, the first of all, they choose the partner, partnership, definitely. Okay, I think that all most of the university all choose this one, and the second they choose the well-being, uh, good health. Probably I think it's because the pandemic. Okay, each university, okay, most of the university realize this is their responsibility, uh, to really ensure, um, you know, the health, uh, the people's health, as well as the well-being of the whole society. And the number three, quality of education. I think is no. Out, right <laughs> because they're all universities that definitely don't say yeah no matter how okay uh, other SDGs but we should provide a good quality of education with the students and then also this is the QS ranking okay and they also published the sustainability ranking system in 2020 uh uh, 2021st, and then all use the quantitative data. And but however, this is now um, voluntary. Uh, this is the compulsory because the QS rankings only select the top uh, 700 universally on their global rankings, and it actually is to to see their performances related to sustainability. So they first of all they actually mainly focus on the social impact of the university, and then also. Uh, the other dimension environment definitely green campus and uh, how exactly reduced the uh, carbon taxings whatever and but the last year 2023 that in another dimension there's the governance they try to see how exactly is that in university through the government uh, management through your institutional governance and to really enhance to really make that the SDGs could be really incorporated into your university system 
And that is uh, in Kwahi 2019. <laughs> uh, I think it's very interesting because I read this report, I think that in Kwahi authority do something. And in this report, of course, there are several indicators, standards, but I try to actually uh, summarize them into some dimensions. I mean, mainly in Kwahi mentioned about if you really want to see the performance of universities, SDGs, or, um, you know, the result, policy and then outreach were very important. Governance, leadership, also very, very important. These two things are significant. And also the programs about the knowledge and research. And most important thing is, okay, you engage your stakeholders and also you need funding to support, okay, this kind of implementations. But however, they still mention that, okay, you need to provide some kind of trainings for your faculty members as well as the staff. So I think it's a very, very good, you know, uh, for, uh, framework for a QA agency, okay, uh, in addition to, you know, those global metric, I think the Inquahi provide very, very good examples for all the QA agency. If we really want to see how, uh, the university that done. So I try to, you know, make certain kinds of the comparison, but just for your reference due to the time limit. So, I mean, based on this, I try to come up with some things probably you could do in the future. Okay, sustainability, okay, SDGs. I mean, there should be relevance to university governance and IQA system should be established. And of course, the national policy, the EQA system also should also should be actually established as too. And by the way, I mean, certain kinds of international guidelines, the principle, which also should take into the considerations. But however, when we actually uh, want to respond to SDG or implement SDG, we have to think about like how exactly you could really facilitate the talent mobility and then also the SDG in a certain way that we also could support the university and then to enhance their gradual employability. But however, when we implement the SDG, Okay, another day, you know, geopolitical tensions, probably you have certain kinds of the impact on them. And then the global, uh, global competition and the marketization. So those kind of the factor in certain way probably should be taken into the consideration. So that is about the Taiwan case that I tried to actually uh, conduct this kind of research since uh, 2022, the end. And then I collect the data from the university. But this is the background of the Taiwan's context. If the government in 2018, after the 2000, 15 uh, the UNESCO's uh, that the SDG 17s and then the government Taiwan's government national government published so-called the blueprint for Taiwan's sustainable sustainable uh, development goals it means for all areas and then immediately Ministry of Education they say that okay we want to integrate this kind of concept into our university social responsibility project in 2019 okay so we want to actually make it more a uh, concrete programs and that the university know what it could supposed to do and now currently 2022 now he had published the new standards for all the institutions. And then uh, this is our third cycle of the institutional aggregation. And the one of the standard actually is trying to indicate that universities should be able to commit themselves to the social responsibility, okay, in links with, uh, linking with the institutional development plans, and also to demonstrate how exactly through the teaching, learning, research, how you actually uh, uh, echo the, the needs of the SDG. So this is also now you can see the national aggregation also tries to uh, respond to that. And uh, so far, uh, if you look at the Taiwan system, uh, Taiwan's universities and the 46 university actually has been listed on the THE impact ranking and 10 has been actually ranked on the top 500 in the QS substance relative ranking. And then if you look at the Taiwan list 46 university list on the THE, um, you can see the public university and private university, they chose the different types of the SDGs. Such as if you look at a public university, we build some of them a very, very uh, IT focus, a very engineer computer science. You see the Taiwan, we are IT island, right? So they very focused on the industry, innovations, and infrastructure, and energy also in Taiwan. And then, but if you look at the, the private university, they mainly focused on quality of education and et cetera. And then also things that are reducing quality, also one of their responsibility. And uh, I think- uh, Angela, I'll come in very quickly there. Um, okay. Yeah, if you can, uh, I'll try to be a strict chair, I'll try to keep the the, um, the okay. time limited. Um, although you're, okay. you're, you're, you're doing both the, the international <clears throat> okay. setting and the Taiwanese one, so it is good for you to take a bit longer. Okay. If you can start um, uh, thinking about wrapping up, that would be great. So okay, we have time definitely. for discussion. Okay, very, very, yeah, very quickly, right. just give me yeah, one yeah, minute. Sure.
So uh, this is about some theory also talking about why the university do so. Okay, some universities say that for sale image building and some for competitive approach, definitely. So I think I will skip this probably uh, based on uh, what I found. Okay, most of university, different universities use the diff kind, different kind of approaches. The common approaches is things that why not align with our social responsibility program through the general education. And then they also try to partner with the employers and local community. And then for the challenges, I think that if they really want to respond to SDG, no matter the national accreditor or even the metrics globally, um, the data accuracy, reliability, and how to integrate their IQA system and coordination among the different sections, faculty, student engagements, very, very significant. I think I will skip this. So finally, I think that sustainability governance really will transform, okay, uh, uh, that the student, if they want to really implement the SDGs. And finally, I want to use one of the university presidents from Taiwan. They say that we could not just talk about the SDGs. We talk too much and the biggest challenges. So far, we still define, okay, what will be the answers for SDGs? Thank you for your debate, uh, your attention. Sorry. Thank, thank you very much, Angela. No, that, that, that's great. As, as, as I was saying, you somehow uh, do two forms of presentation. One is about the international scene setting, and it was very interesting um, that you shared uh, uh, developments, for example, uh, uh, with the, the Times Higher Impact Ranking, and uh, but also drilling in into the Taiwanese case. So that, that that's really good. Uh, thank you very much, Angela. And uh, I'd, li uh, I'd, I'd like now to pass it to uh, Isaac to uh, to tell us about the the Andorra experience. Thank you, thank you, Fabrizio. Thank you for your introduction before and thank you in Coafe for letting our small agency to participate in this in this event. I'm really glad uh, to share our experiences here in Andorra relating sustainability and quality assurance. Let me share the presentation. And can you please confirm that you see did you see it? Yes. All good. Thank you. You can see the changes, right, as well? Great. So, um, Aqua has been, has been uh, well, working on, on this, on quality assurance and the sustainability agenda. Uh, actually, uh, we are located in, in Andorra. Andorra is a, a micro city in Europe. Uh, it's only 85,000 inhabitants, so really, really small. But uh, since 2015 that we have the SDG, so our government started, uh, well, aligning the national agenda to this global agenda. And examples of that is the national strategic plan, uh, the green schools, for instance. So our kids, our small kids, they learn about sustainable development, they learn about the recycling, they learn about a lot of things from, uh, from, from the beginning, let's see. And this is because, at the end, we we one one live in the mountains, uh, in nature, and this is was really really important for our for our government. Uh, it's in this in this moment as well that universities, uh, mainly the public university, the University of Andorra, started expressing or started showing this desire to align with the global agenda as well. Uh, and well, in this context, I have to say that Aqua, uh, we are the sole quality assurance agency in Andorra, and as a, an important stakeholder in the higher education system in our country, we also wanted to contribute uh, in uh, sustainable uh, development as well, and these and these advances. So, uh, what we wanted to do basically uh, came from a fundamental idea. So what we think is that uh, higher education institutions, they should, they must, let's say, provide uh, good programs, let's say, good learning and teaching experience to our uh, students, basically to train uh, professionals to tackle not the future problems related to sustainable development, but the present problems that we have. So basically, based on that, we wanted to check the quality of this training. And uh, what we wanted to do basically was define strategic guidelines to redirect the university towards uh, sustainability. So basically what we wanted to do is uh, see uh, how we can assist the universities basically 
uh, go to 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 this application of the uh, of this global agenda. Let's say right. Of course, always considering their autonomy and independence. Um, and we did it uh, in a collaborative uh, way. So basically, we start doing a first project, a research project, a small project together with the university, the Autonomous University of Barcelona and the Complex Research Group. And uh, the objective of this uh, project was just making a relationship between the ESG, the European Standards and Islands, the part one, and uh, the SDG. This was the main objective. And we knew that it was a challenge because at the end, you know, it has, uh, well, certain complexity because sustainable development and quality assurance, they have different origins, goals. Even we talk differently uh, in terms of uh, defining each one of these uh, standards or goals. But we saw as well that there are some similarities as well. So there's a systematic approach uh, and both of them, they influence university activities. Uh, both of them are really relevant for education and both of them are dynamic and in constant evolution. So we thought why uh, in this, uh, why not, you know, it, we, we find, you know, an evolution just to merge both of them. That, that was a little bit the, the, the idea in that moment. We are talking about 2017. Uh, so as just an example, let me show you what, what we did. So basically for the ESG 1.2, that is design and approval of problems. Uh, so we uh, relate these two. Actually, I have to say that we work with a lot of stakeholders, a lot of people giving their point of, different point of view. So it was a really multidisciplinary approach that we took. So all this, all this team uh, related the ESG 1.2 with the quality education and the uh, partnership for the goals. Uh, and we not uh, only gave you know, this relationship, but we proposed different uh, good practices that universities should implement in order to, uh, well, um, be committed to the sustainable development. And in this, in this sense, uh, talking about the ESG 1.2 and these two objectives, uh, what we said is that the universities, what, when, when preparing a program, they have to sustainability. So uh, the social part, the environmental part, and also the economic part. Uh, they have to do it considering all the point of view of all stakeholders, and they have to provide learning outcomes, competences and learning outcomes that can uh, basically be used to train these professionals I was mentioning before, these professionals that will tackle or are tackling uh, the problems uh, that we have globally. So uh, we did this for all the ESG. It was, you know, we, we get a good result. Actually, we presented this uh, in different conferences and actually we thought, we have to go beyond that, not only this relationship, but what we have to do is try to embed the SDG into an institutional quality uh, assessment process. And actually we did it collaboratively as well. Uh, actually we work together with ACUA, that is the Aragonese uh, uh, Quality Assurance Agency in Spain. So the one from Aragon, we worked together on a proposal for a project that it was sent to Inquaje. And actually we got uh, funding from Inquaje. Uh, we got uh, funding from Inquaje. We used the previous project uh, that I explained together with these two uh, big references from UK and Australia regarding sustainability and quality assurance. And we started working, we started developing the project together. So basically what we wanted to do is propose indicators to embed this SDG into the uh, quality assessment of institutions. And we did it as well uh, in a multidisciplinary approach. So we had people from all stakeholders in both uh, the Aragonese and Andorran uh, higher education system so we work with government universities, students, the agencies, and so on. And we have an international board, people from 
the previous project from the Autonomous University of Barcelona, from other Spanish universities. And even we had, you know, the leader, let's say, of the project, Professor Kilbury, a great expert in, in the field. And what was the purpose of, you know, meeting all these uh, people together? So to define different dimensions, dimensions that can be considered in both for quality assurance and to see the commitment of the sustainable development in institutions. Uh, we defined these dimensions listed here and we gave different points on them, actually depending on the importance. So we can see programs with 24 points, we can see governance and strategy, quality strategy and processes with 15 and 14. One of the we define indicators. So uh, universities then want to be assessed. What they can uh, do is provide evidence. And based on this evidence, they can get points. Then we defined an scoring system, giving uh, four levels of performance. So basically, depending on the points of the universities can get through this uh, evaluation system, so they can get a label a level of commitment, let's say, commitment on applying the global agenda, let's say, the sustainability development goals. We had bronze, silver, gold, and platinum defined. And basically, this was the project. Actually, uh, the idea was to encourage universities to be committed uh, to a sustainable development. And basically, what we thought is, let's give them a label Let's do, you know, an evaluation, and maybe they can show, you know, the label. They can demonstrate that they are, you know, aligned with uh, the SDG. That was the main idea, and actually, this was took uh, for Aqua. Uh, Aqua in 2021 presented a really great, you know, program Alkaos. That was basically this idea that we presented in this project, but applied to the reality, and actually. Uh, universities, this I think University of Zaragoza uh, got uh, certified using this program. Actually, in that moment in 2021, uh, Aqua couldn't apply anything similar in our country because uh, we didn't have the institutional accreditation uh, established in Andorra. We are only doing program accreditation. Uh, but the thing is that we are working now with the ministry just to implement this. The, global institutional evaluation and accreditation. And also we are thinking about starting, the starting point would be implementing something similar as ACUA did in 2021. Basically the idea is to, again, encourage higher education institutions to be able or to adopt, uh, adapt uh, um, a culture of sustainability. So the learning and innovation, we want to help them, we want to assist them to do this and basically because what we need in society is this, the professionals that will tackle the problems, the global problems that we have. And we thought that this would be a really good idea, a really good initiative to start this process. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. Uh, that that is really uh, interesting, and indeed some some questions are already uh, popping up, such as how do we scale this initiative up across all quality assurance re regimes from uh, Scott Blair, and uh, but we'll we'll touch upon this um, yeah, this question later on. I'd like to move on and uh, invite the next speaker to take the floor. Over to you, Carol. Thank you, Fabrizio, and thank you to Inquahe for this opportunity for us to share our perspective uh, from Alicia's point of view. So allow me to share my slides. So hopefully everyone can see the slides. Yes. Okay. So uh, when we talk about uh, sustainability from Malaysia's point of view, there is this one study from the Academy of Sciences Malaysia about the impact of post-normal times to higher education. And you can see the one that I highlighted in red. One of it is to, to look at the planetary health and also sustainability focused, uh, uh, emphasis on sustainability in education and research with impact. 
And the other one is about the values driven education and DEI, which is about diversity, equal, uh, equity, equality, and also uh, inclusion. So embody embodying the Malaysian national education philosophy. So we have to revert back to what is our education philosophy, developing potential for indi of individuals in a holistic and integrated manner. So I think these are some of the things that are, um, you know, based on the study, very, very uh, impact of higher education based on post-normal times. When we talk about post-normal times, we're talking about the effect of COVID-19 as well as the introduction of generative AI. And of course, as part of it, you can see that the quality assurance and accreditation needs to also evolve. Evolving accreditation systems and learning assessments is also a crucial in, uh, in handling the impact of these post-normal times. And the future of higher education institutions will need to be agile, adaptable, and innovative to navigate the changing landscape successfully. Digitalization and digital literacy will be a strong driving force in the future. Okay, and if you look at the talent for the future, you can see that based on the uh, transform, uh, transformational shift, you can see that the one on the right, the one that I highlighted in red as well, you need to have graduates, talents, who has values infused in them and impact driven, and also to look at things from the ecosystem view instead of looking at it from a silo point of view. So I think these are all the skill sets that we want to um, embed and also to nurture our talents uh, to be prepared for the future. And of course, with that, we need to change the way we educate and also teach our students. And of course, balanced talent, uh, knowledge on character, they are imaginative, agile, adaptive, flexible, and future ready with attributes responsive to post-normal times. These are all the uh, you know, requirements of the future talents in the world. Okay, and if you look at all this, if we were to, to go one by one, it's going to be it's going to take a lot of time. Of course, uh, as mentioned, the uh, the slides will be shared with the, the audience today. So I'm not going to go through one by one. Okay, but these are just some of the attributes and skill sets required based on the study and educators as well should also undergo professional development to be updated with the new attributes and skills that the students need to have in the post-normal times. We talk about sustainability, of course, our lecturers, educators need to also equip themselves with the knowledge on sustainability as well and put that as part of, you know, the content in the classroom and in the lectures. And uh, of course, when we look into the zoom into the humanity centric uh, teaching and learning. So of course, what do students look out, look for when they come to the universities They look at all these five things perhaps. And of course, they're looking at the potential future job market for them. Okay, and uh, we have to uh, take note that humanity centric is very important and progress in science and technology innovation must be accountable to the well-being of individuals and societies with a keen awareness of the broader impact on the planet and future generations. So this concept should be a shared value among family, society, and nurtured through schools and education system be part of the higher education curriculum embedded in our governance and policies and the innovations that we offer. And how do we uh, have this? Of course, again, uh, some of the highlights are about the interdisciplinary integration. So we have to start looking into integration of a multidisciplinary, of course, sustainability of part of it, cultivating empathy is also part of humanity-centric teaching and learning. And uh, ethical decision-making, uh, adaptive learning environments, and of course, the one that I highlighted in red, the global perspectives. So we need to look at the global perspectives and also looking at the global uh, sustainability agenda as part of uh, the things that we cover. And of course, when we talk about uh, this, we cannot run away from ESD, Education for Sustainable Development in which it's defined as the education that encourages and empowers learners of all ages to obtain the required knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to take the informed decisions and responsible actions to shape a sustainable future. Now, why is this important is because when we talk about SDGs, we are talking about all the 17 goals for the SDG. How do we educate our talents to be a part and contributing to all the SDGs is through the ESD. So ESD will actually prepare our talents to all areas be it on the cognitive side, behavioral, as well as uh, hands-on and skills. So all these actually aspects of, an, uh, of ESD has to be uh, embedded in the curriculum 
uh, in order for us to achieve and, and to nurture talents in order for our countries to be able to achieve the, the SDGs set by the respective governments. And of course, we're talking about the societal transformation uh, and the ped I mean, in terms of the pedagogy and learning environment, the learning content and the learning outcomes as well. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, everything uh, when we talk about uh, embedding and nurturing the talents, we have to embed all these elements of ESD within the curriculum and the syllabus. And this is actually from UNESCO. We have to integrate this into all the levels of education starting from the as early as early childhood uh, education to the tertiary and adult education. So it's part of, of the, uh, what is required from uh, UNESCO. And of course, in order to achieve this, the government, the learners, the educators, the people, and everyone basically has to be a part of this. And in order to achieve the ESD by 2030, in 10 years time, this was published in 2010, sorry, 2020. So we need everybody to, to be together in order to achieve this goal. And of course, from the perspective of Malaysian Qualifications Agency and the Ministry of Higher Education, we need to look at this from the, global, uh, from the government and the country level perspective. So implementing ESD for 2030 at the country level, and we look at this ESD toolbox and in order for us to embed uh, the key areas of the implementation of this ESD. And of course, when we talk about this, uh, one part of our role is to look at, relook at the Malaysian Qualifications Framework. So we have the second edition uh, published in 2017. And if you look at the note down there, it says that the framework provides a set of levels and descriptors. Okay, and it covers both all the sectors here and all the levels. So what is important in uh, order for us to embrace and also to uh, have the culture of embedding the sustainability agenda into our higher education programs is through, one of it is through the framework itself and through the descriptors. So how we, what we can do is we can make the descriptors better and to be inclusive of the SDGs and also the ESD. Okay, and uh, what we have been doing so far, we are in the midst of revising our framework. Uh, this is going to be the uh, 2024 edition of the Malaysian Qualifications Framework. And uh, what we pledge is that we will advocate the concept and practice of sustainability. The higher education providers are recommended to include the global sustainability agenda at all the MQF levels in their graduate profiles and or any of the teaching uh, learning uh, outcome domains, learning content, or assessment to produce graduates with balance in holistic academic and social skills. So, uh, and, and these elements of sustainability could also be part offered as part uh, of the partial qualification. For example, micro-credentials under the flexible learning pathways and incorporated as part of the continuous professional development for trainers as well as the academic staff. Again, I think it's very important that everyone has to be uh, well-versed with uh, the sustainability agenda in order for everyone to be uh, for us to impart that knowledge and, and, and share that with our students to develop the next uh, batch of talents. And as a general practice, individual programs design should address the clusters of learning outcomes appropriately. This is part of the requirement to address and to adhere to the Malaysian qualifications framework. So when you put attributes that are related to SDG to ESD, perhaps then it will actually indirectly indirectly uh, contributes towards uh, this program skewing towards an inclu inclusive uh, incorporating inclusion uh, including the uh, elements of SDG and elements of sustainability into the curriculum okay and we also uh, put this as part of for every type of course including work-based learning and also co-curricular activities and this is part of the mapping that perhaps uh, we have uh, also uh, looking look at in terms of how we map the domains of our Malaysian qualifications framework 2.0 and the sustainability key uh, competencies in the ESD. So we can see that uh, the, the left side here is from the national education philosophy. So what we actually want to our uh, talents to be, to embrace the national education philosophy. And the middle part is the Malaysian qualifications framework uh, learning domains, we have five clusters and 11 attributes. And then how we dis do mappings of this to the competencies of the ESD. So we can see that uh, at the heart of the MQM learning domain lies a synergy between the found uh, foundational knowledge 
and the transformative com uh, competencies of the SDGs. So actually part of everything is actually already there is how we uh, package this so that it's, uh, it looks uh, and it package it well so that people can understand and see that ESG is there, SDG is there. Okay, the sustainability agenda is there in the, in the framework itself. So uh, I think this is part of what we are hoping by the mid of this year, we will be able to publish and be ref uh, referenced by all the institutions in Malaysia. And uh, I think also uh, part of the uh, examples of implementation so far, although we have yet to have this uh, framework uh, endorsed, but some universities have already taken a proactive role and actions in, in, in actually embedding ESD as part of the curriculum, as part of their uh, studies as well. So these institutions including uh, includes the likes of the University of Technology of Malaysia, University of Science Malaysia, and UPM, University of Putra Malaysia, and also University of Bangsa Malaysia. So we have this Lestari uh, Center at UKM. I can see and, and go through this website. It, it gets you to the, uh, the, the page, the landing page of the sustainability part of the university. And USM, the Science Malaysia University, which has been doing very well in the Times Higher Education, high education Impact Rankings. They are ranked number four in the world in 2023. And all, about 24 Malaysian higher education institutions are ranked in the 2022 uh, ranking. So you can also go to the USM website, which is highlighted here to see what are their initiatives with, re relate, uh, with relation to uh, addressing the SDGs. And uh, for example, in UPM, they are looking at more on the food security. So they have come up with a framework in, in the university, and this is cut across all the programs offered in the university to actually address, uh, develop this talents who can actually uh, be a part to address the SDG related to food security. And this is just one sample of mapping uh, done by one of the university on how this can, uh, uh, between the mapping between the Malaysian qualification framework and the ESD uh, competencies. So this is um, maybe one of the example and we encourage this kind of proactive uh, approach by the universities. And in, in, all, in all in all, this is my last, last slide. Basically, what we want to do is actually to help the country, to help Malaysia to do better in the reporting in the SDG report. Uh, we can see that Malaysia is not doing, uh, is doing fairly well, but of course it could have been better. And what we can do from the higher education institution's point of view is to actually help the country, help the government to do a better, uh, to number one, develop the talents who are more aware of the sustainability agenda. And then in the, uh, secondly, we also need to contribute to the reporting of the country to the, uh, to the United Nations. So I think that's part of my presentation today. Back to you, uh, Fabrizio, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, that is again, very interesting and fascinating. Uh, a clear example of a, a strategic and sector-wide uh, uh, effort uh, to help uh, communities to to make some progress towards uh, sustainable development goals including by reviewing the uh, the national qualifications framework that that is that is really interesting um thank you Kairul. and uh, i'd like to invite uh, solange our four panelists to take the floor to give us uh, the perspective of city high thank you solange thank you fabrizio good morning uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and thank you uh, to Hinkwahe for organization of this uh, very interesting webinar. Um, I will try to get you uh, develop some insights from France and from CTI. So CTI is Commission des Titres d'Ingénieur, Quality Assurance Agency. So I'll start by giving you some insights about this. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. OK. So in a nutshell, La Commission des Titres d'Ingénieur, CTI, the Quality Assurance Agency that was founded by Lowe and is quite old, as you can see. We are specialized in engineering schools and engineering programs, so not only degrees, but really schools and programs. And uh, the idea is really to quality assure engineering in France and abroad. This is to remind you of the situation in France. Uh, you can see the number of students, but also uh, remind you that there are 
several types of higher education institutions, university, and uh, other types of schools, and among them engineering schools. As you can see, we have 204 engineering schools, and this is a perimeter of CTI. The engineering um, situation also in France is quite specific. There is a degree, but the profession is not regulated, uh, no chartered engineer as such. Uh, the engineering degree is protected by law. This is a master. And it means that you have um, compulsory accreditations for CTI. And at the end of the programs delivered by engineering schools, you got both master and engineering degree. So our approach as CTI was really dependent on the national situation and also the very specific dedicated field in which we are working. This is the reason why I'll get to this uh, specific issues, the role of the engineers, the responsibility of the institutions in France, and also the role of the um, stakeholders that were really pressing for adaptation of our framework, which we did. And I'll try also not having any crystal ball, but still to have a look at what will be the future. Firstly, engineering in society. Um, there is a dedicated model of engineering in France. I mentioned it earlier, master and um, dedicated title, but also the role and the perception of the engineer is a scientist, so meaning scientific and technical background, but not only. What to expect from engineers being able to tackle a new challenges, to adapt to new techniques, to, to, be, to be the one driving innovation, to be the one managing, communicating. So having really um, multi, multi different skills and being able to adapt to any kind of situation is really considered as being in the front line for SDG experimentation. And the, the question might not be which SDG is related to engineers profession, but which is not, which SDG would not be related to the engineering profession. And that's not so easy to answer. All of them are, are really related to the engineering profession. So there was a clear responsibility from higher education institutions in that form. Of course, it's within the European standards and guidelines that we all apply in Europe. And um, there is a dedicated role given to higher education as being um, as being uh, um, supporting more than higher education, more, more than higher education, but also social cohesion, economic growth, global competitiveness. So you have here the quotation from the ESG. So higher education and higher education institutions were given really a big role on that. And I think that they really were eager to go on to go on this direction and to go beyond their initial missions of learning, teaching, and research. So we also had a role as quality assurance agencies. Uh, of course, it's in the ESG, but more than that, um, it, it was really something that was going with accompanying the institutions in their responsibility and being next to them in their adaptation to the context. In addition to the initiatives of the institutions, what we, what we noticed was really a growing demand, growing demand from two sides. Firstly, from the students. Uh, they are fully aware of um, the situation and fully demanding for SDG and sustainable environment and world. So there, was, there were many requests to institutions, but also to CTI to make sure that programs would be adapted to the new challenges. And we also had more and more students engage in that in that field. CTI is also um, composed by many socioeconomic representatives in its DNA. So they are part of the board, they are part of the member, they are everywhere in the in the structure of CTI. So we have really frequent dialogue with them. And they really stressed very early the direct links with market needs. There are new professions directly in line and directly. Um, going out of the um, new challenges um, that we are all facing. They needed new kind of the engineers with adapted skills, but they also needed programs adapted. So this is 
uh, where we decided to change our framework. So the framework is called Reference et Orientation, R and O. Um, and the idea was not directly to link it to the SDG, but more generally to link it to the word environment. So you can see that the word environment in our framework is mentioned 30 uh, times, and it's really uh, everywhere in the framework. It's the strategy of the institution, but also a societal and environmental responsibility. It's also evaluated in, in the light of the purchase strategy, the cooperation and its environmental impact. And you can see also it's included in the curriculum and in the definition of what should be an engineer. It is a major criteria um, for the curriculum and I'll get back to that right after. So that was really incorporated in the framework, making sure that environment is one of the criteria that is in the content of the programs delivered by the institution, but also within the criteria that are evaluated by CTI. It means that if there is a higher education institution delivering um, engineers degrees in France, the institution will be evaluated regarding its impact regarding its strategy, regarding the, the content of its programs related to environment. And in addition to the, to the framework, we also had a thematic not dealing on uh, social responsibility. So just to give you an overview of this major criteria that is included in the, in the, in the framework and the meaning that it is compulsory for the institution. And you can see that the curriculum includes valid teaching specific to societal and environment responsibility for all students. SDGs, of course, but not only. Um, life cycle of projects and all should be designed to, to explore the theme of society, societal and environmental responsibility. So it's really broad, but in the meantime, there is a specific uh, criteria for the program in addition to the other uh, mentions of the word environment in the um, in the um, framework. What's next? Um, the first thing is that at national level, the work is not over and we're still continuing to, to share with our stakeholders and they are still demanding maybe for more and uh, more, um, more uh, uh, engineers, that's one, but also more engineers with dedicated field and being able to adapt to the to the changes. Um, we are also um, committed to go for a climate fresh experience at CTI, so it will be before summer if everything goes right. And also um, trying to help institution in another way, not only based on the evaluation, external evaluation process, but also trying to give them tools to develop their self-evaluation approaches. So this is what where we are working on. Of course, there is a compulsory um, external evaluation, but in addition to that, each institution um, can also self-evaluate itself and see where it stands uh, regarding uh, environment and environment criteria. There are still discussion on adding more criteria, and we had, uh, we had discussion to try to see, for example, if we could take into account um, institutions willing to engage in a mobility that would be mobility by trains, by bicycle or whatever, that could be much better than any other kind of mobility and how we could grade them uh, with this kind of possibility. So this is something that we're still discussing. National level is one thing, European level is another one. Uh, pretty sure that the European Universities Initiative is playing a role also in the sustainable agenda. The European universities are all looking at sustainable criteria, and we have many examples of uh, alliances working on that area, not only in terms of thematic, but also in the alliances trying to take care of uh, the, the, the needs of the students, of the market needs, and of their institutions. The, the, the question was also raised, is that something that the revision of the European standard and guidelines could take in uh, with? And who knows, uh, the criteria related to environment and to social responsibility could be uh, included in some way in the ESG, even if it's already, um, it's already somewhere in the framework. And this is something that is already mentioned, but it, it could be more. So this is something that might also be discussed. 
now I think the issue is not only rega regarding national level or continents level, but it's going really much more than that and further than that. The issue of having um, environmental, um, uh, let's say, uh, courses or external evaluation or of environmental um, profile of the institution also relates to the role of the institutions themselves. What is the role of an institution? Of course, it's learning, teaching, researching, driving innovation, but are we asking also institution uh, to be the one uh, promoting and being the major actor of changing um, our our perception to, to sustainability. This is one question, but then it comes directly the issue of the mandate of the quality assurance agency. Are we allowed? Is it our role? Is it what is expected from us uh, to go and to the institution and check really more than we do it actually? What are their role? What is their impact? Are we the one going to measure the impact of learning and teaching in a, in a more global environmental way. So this is really some questions that we are dealing with uh, now and asking where the limit should be found. This is something that we really discuss with our stakeholders, with the institutions and in line with the engineering profession. So we have a, a bias on that, but very true that the role of the institution and the role of quality assurance agency is crucial uh, in that in that field. Thank you very much, Solange. Uh, that, that is uh, uh, that was really interesting. Uh, and indeed, you conclude with uh, some absolutely fundamental questions uh, and questions that uh, was listening to um, the four of you outlining your views and experiences this came um, uh, came to mind um, which is really about the role of external quality assurance agencies about the mission so when we talk about sdgs and uh, the external quality assurance um, uh, and external quality assurance we are somehow asking about the social mission of quality assurance bodies and accreditation bodies and uh, beyond the traditional one of securing academic standards uh, um, and safeguarding the student experience. Although uh, already from what you were saying, uh, Solange, it, it really comes across how um, in order to re uh, ensure the quality and the relevance of uh, education, um, uh, it is compelling from a, uh, for a, at least a program accreditation uh, uh, agencies like yourself to make sure that the learning outcomes are fit for purpose for for today's uh, challenges. So I would like to start exactly somehow with the with, with the question uh, that uh, that you ask at the end, uh, Solange. So what what is and this is a question for everyone here, and then we're going to go and take uh, some questions from delegates. What is your view about these fundamental questions? To what an extent quality assurance agencies setting out normative directions around SDGs are crossing the line of institutional autonomy and, uh, and uh, the quality assurance agency academic quality assurance mission? To what an extent should this be the job of quality assurance agencies? And more generally, where should the mandate come from for quality assurance agency to do so? And perhaps these different national uh, frameworks uh, uh, have different answers there. So I'll stop here and uh, who would like to take this, this question first? Maybe I can Solange, continue please. right after my presentation and, and then um, share again with you. Um, this is really a question that we were ourselves asking when we were um, incorporating the new criteria in the framework. Where do we have, is it firstly our mandate? And we had no comment from the, from the national ministries and so on. So it was really a decision from CTI and from our quality assurance agency with discussion with the students, with the stakeholders and so on. So that was really the process of a continuous enhancement within the quality assurance agency. So this is one. Second one is where do we stop with institutions? Um, we do not feel that we have to um, write strict rules and being very normative, but what we can do is try to show and share some good experiences and good practices, um, giving highlights of what other institutions can do and where we should 
try to go to giving a direction, a target to achieve. So this is where we stand. And you were mentioning, this is my, my third uh, point, you were mentioning um, academic freedom, institutional autonomy, and so on. I think this is really our, our limit. The institution have the primary responsibility. This is very clear for CTI. Uh, we are not here to prescribe what should the content of the program be, but we are here again to, to give some directions and be next to the institutions to achieve their own goals. Thank you, Solange. Uh, th that is very clear and, uh, and very, uh, very helpful to start us off. Uh, what, what is... Uh, um, uh... What is your views, Isaac? I can see that you, you have unmuted yourself. Yeah, thank you. I, I totally agree with Solange. Actually, I think um, agencies, as I mentioned in my presentation, so the idea as well in Aqua, uh, the, idea, the idea started in the agency, talking to the other stakeholders as well. Actually, we could see that universities in Andorra were already implementing uh, a lot of initiatives just to be aligned with, with the SDG. Actually, I think it was Angela who mentioned that in Taiwan as well. So universities are implementing many things, but it's a kind of invisible implementation because it's not regulated, let's say. And I, I would like to go through, through this point. So right now, I think um, quality, quality uh, assurance agencies, we cannot tackle a lot the problem. So we cannot go for accountability, let's say. And I think we don't have to go because at the end, higher education institutions, they have the autonomy and the competence to, to work on the implementation of their own initiatives. But we can go with them. We can assist, we can assist them, but it would be easier if standards were, uh, standards and guidelines were a little bit more clearer so Solange mentioned that in the ESG, the European Standard Guidelines, we have already something mentioned there, but it's not highlighted. So uh, now that it's, uh, well, the, the ESG are being revealed, I think it would be, um, you know, it's uh, actually they are trying to implement this kind of, you know, the social mission of the higher education institutions. <clears throat> I think sustainability is not, not on the table, but... You know, other aspects as inclusion, equality, academic integrity, maybe will be in the new version of the ESG. So why not, you know, sustainability? And thinking on this fundamental thought that we have in the agency, that is universities, higher education institutions, they need to provide uh, to the society these professionals to tackle the problem. So basically, it would be a kind of, you know, enhanced um, doing an enhanced-led uh, approach, but it will be applying practices of quality assurance fit for a purpose, for this purpose of having these professionals, right? So that's why, that's how we see that the agencies could contribute. But it would be much easier if the ESG, for instance, or the IESG, the International Standards and Guidelines, uh, could, you know, provide us with a little, a little bit more, something more highlighted. So agencies, should tackle this as well. Actually, just, just an example, Andorra Aqua is uh, one of the funding members of CIAPTES, that is the Ibero-American uh, Network for Quality Assurance Agencies. And in the last meeting we had, in the last plenary meeting, sustainability was uh, you know, put on the table to improve the good practice. The good practice would be like the standards and guidelines. So Seattle uh, is, is trying to go to that line. Why not, you know, other regions in the world? So I think this, this is the vision that goes beyond the quality assurance agencies, but still it would be really helpful to do our job. And again, not to do accountability, but to help much better higher education institutions to be more committed and to align with the global agenda. Thank you, Isaac, and uh, uh, a lot of food for thought, even for, for Hinkwahi uh, itself. Uh, Angela, please. Yeah, okay. I think this issue is very fundamental that you addressed. It means if the QA has the mandate or not. Um, if they look at it like um, the Taiwan uh, case that I share with you, the government already, already 
initiate certain kinds of policy, though it's not very clearly identified that what exactly is that the role the QA agency is supposed to play. But however, the quality assurance agency, I mean, no matter it's a national credit or like the HEAG or the other sale funded a quality assurance agency, or even some professional, you know, in Taiwan, we still have the engineering uh, uh, accreditors. Okay, they all try to respond on those kind uh, the policy published by the, uh, the the national government, and then also um, in the middle, the Ministry of Education uh, that tries to incorporate it into certain kinds of very specific program that I would share with you. Though we do not call it the SDGs programs, we call it the University Social Responsibility because all things that the university is supposed to do, you have to respond to the social needs and then to help the student actually is to learn the great experiences, learning experiences. I mean, think, I think it's great to learn from okay, the other uh, speakers focusing, uh, uh, focusing about the, the student experiences and how exactly, particularly in you know, one of the questions that I just looked at it, see how exactly SDG could really facilitate the students' employability. I think those kind of issues currently, I mean, that a quality assurance agency is supposed to actually take all the things into the consideration. But for my observations, I mean, though um, the government have the policy, or even the mission education actually certain kinds of the program and use the fundings to facilitate the university pay more attention to but one thing that we have to pay attention to this diversification you see and then also the limited resources different time university how exactly they could implement it though the, ideally we hope they all could cover all things but um in practice you could see um the different university different time university actually what exactly they could respond to those kind of the uh, SDGs issues probably is um really different. So I mean, first of all, uh, like the Taiwan, for example, we encourage the university, first of all, of course, you have to look at the sustainability, all the issues, but first of all, realize your identity, realize how much resources you have, and respect your futures, first of all, because based on your future, based on your academic programs, for example, if you do not have any like water resources program, how come you can respond to those kind of the issues? Okay, very, very efficiently. So I mean, first of all, we respect the university future, the characteristics and the academic programs and how exactly their research have done over the years. I mean, first of all, they have to review themselves, self evaluations, who they are and what they could do at this moment. Probably in the future, they could do more, but at this moment, this is what they could do. And another thing that, of course, autonomy, this is what I say, autonomy, you should respect them. Okay, this is what it could do. And then what probably something, some university could do, but your university probably at this moment is, not you not easier for you and another thing that i want to mention about though we all talk about the student talk about uh, the whole uh, stakeholders but i mean most important thing is i mean the sdg could not be done okay uh by university only or by the government i think we should engage the employers so this is why it means I when I interview several university presidents in Taiwan, they always finally just mention to me that Angela, you see, though we've done so many things and we're for students, for faculty members, for whole university. My most important thing that we should engage the employers because the student finally graduate and then they will work in the job market and how exactly okay that the employees realize they should actually make some contributions to the SDG developments within the campuses. And the QA, of course, they play also a very important role. That's what I answer. Thank you, Angela. That, that, that's really helpful. And um, Carol, over to you. I mean, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, MQA is leading uh, the review of uh, the Malaysian Qualifications Framework. That it, so it looks like that you have uh, possibly, but let us understand, a stronger mandate around the implementation of uh, the SDGs, SDGs in higher education. Um, uh, give us some uh, some thought about exactly your your role. MQA, but also uh, your answer uh, to the more general question. Thank you. Thank you, Fabrizio. And I, I think I, I totally agree with the uh, panelists with regards to the autonomy of the university about the mandate of the quality assurance agencies and uh, how we should act, uh, how we should all play our roles uh, separately, individually. So from the perspective of Malaysia, for example, when we look at this uh, sustainability agenda, so we know that we have the SDG set by the, by the United Nations and it's trickled down to the nation, individual nations, and then that is trickled down to all, the, all of us in how we want to achieve and help the country to achieve and the, the, uh, the, the world to achieve the uh, respective goals. And that is one of our ways is through education, how we educate our talents and prepare them to be able to, you know, have that uh, sustainability uh, conscious mindset 
and, and also help in achieving all these uh, separate goals. And definitely, as mentioned by Angela, you know, in different universities, they have their need, different niche areas. For example, we are talking about uh, the example I gave just now from the Putra University. They are our so-called uh, university for agriculture. So definitely they will look into food security as part of the main part, you know, that they can contribute the most. But not to say that they only should focus on that. Of course, when you produce talents, talents are meant to be, you know, going into different types of industries. So we should actually uh, generate talents um, that can actually support whichever SDG. And uh, looking at uh, other universities, we have Energy University, definitely the, the, the main part the contribution will be to on SDG 7 on the clean, uh, clean uh, energy. So again, uh, I think uh, what we have for, uh, seen in Malaysia is that uh, based on the reports, yeah, based on the reports that we being compiled by our central government, we see that there's lack in terms of data. And uh, as, as mentioned by uh, Isaac and also Solaj, definitely institutions are proactive enough to do things. Uh, so we expect that other entities, the industries, as well as the communities also do their part. But when it comes to reporting, it's a bit difficult to actually consolidate all this data. So one way of, of doing that is through a better and, and more structured way of reporting. And how we can do that, assist that from the higher education point of view, is that through the agency, when we do this kind of revision in the, in the framework, we hope that we'll be able to actually capture some of the data that will actually help us in do the a better reporting for the country, and it will definitely uh, have a better, a more better impact in terms of the report. But of course, uh, the other way, uh, the other thing that we are also looking at, uh, Fabrizio and, and uh, all the uh, uh, attendees today, is that once we uh, we come up with this new twenty twenty four framework, we will also uh, in the plan of producing a kind of like guidelines or an advisory to the institutions with regards to how you can actually embrace and how you can actually address the issue um, the, you know the mapping of the sustainability so that is going to be the next project for us hopefully we can with that we have a better guidelines on how we can actually help the institutions to um, to address and to map you know to incorporate and include the sustainability agenda in the curriculum and it's beyond curriculum the co-curricular activities as well so I think that's, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. So it, it, it seems to me that in the case of MQA, your mandate somehow comes from uh, from government as part of its responsibilities towards uh, uh, its commitment towards the United Nations SDGs agenda, and uh, yeah. and and that is uh, a, that is very very good practice to me. Uh, that's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, now, I'm, I'd, I'd like to uh, look at some of the questions that have been raised by delegates. Um, uh, I'm aware that many questions are, have been posted in the chat functions, and I'll go that. Uh, I'll go to that in a second. But there is one question uh, in the Q and A um, uh, box, uh, which is, I think, the one that uh, Angela referred to. So thank you so much for all the presentation. Uh, how does the incorporation of SDGs sustainability translate to job opportunities or employment preferences uh, once the students graduate? I don't know whether any of you have specific uh, specific um, views on this. We, we already touched upon um, uh, this aspect uh, to a certain extent. But I don't know if you if you have any particular experience um, in your um, uh, in your quality assurance agency. If I may say something Please. something quick, actually, uh, the agency together with the ministry we do a survey every year to see how is the employability of the students graduated. Uh, the, I mean. As I mentioned, we are 85,000 inhabitants. So our statistics, you know, are not really significant. We cannot take, uh, we, we cannot do a really in-depth analysis, but um, so so I cannot say if in, in Andorra locally, if you get, uh, uh, you know, a program uh, title degree with a lot of learning outcomes related to sustainability, you get a better job or not. But uh, what I would like to mention is, is that at the end, in, there are a lot of stakeholders, not in the higher education systems, but uh, globally. And 
employers, they should be also committed to sustainable development and the application of, uh, you know, the alignment of the, of the, of the SDG. So they, they, there should be a kind of, uh, not, not reward, but, you know, because there's the necessity of tackle the problems that we have nowadays. Uh, so people who is trained with uh, these learning outcomes, they should get easier, you know, a job. This is not, you know, the vision of the agency, but it's a personal vision. It's just, I wanted to mention that. So everyone uh, has its own importance. And I think employers, the importance of them is basically, uh, they, they could be, uh, you know, selecting the people that they are. Thank you, Isaac. And um, Angela, I can see you have your yeah. hand raised. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I I try to share as well. I observe uh, from look at my my uh, context. Uh, first of all, I means I found out um, this is a very significant issue. So how exactly is that through SDG the student um, graduates in poverty could be really enhanced? But um, interestingly, you know, one of the re surveys that we found in Asia. Um, in general, students really do undergraduate students. I mean, this survey is talking on the undergraduate student. They do not really understand what exactly is the SDG meet to them. So that's very interesting what we found. So it means that uh, through that the finding, though we think they're very important, and but students still don't know how exactly is that the SDG could really um, finally connect it or even reference to their job something so i mean this is one thing that all the university probably or even the qa agencies probably we should aware and how exactly really engage the students in all kind of activity so you can see in taiwan's case we find out the three different mode has been adopted by university in order to really let a student have this kind of awareness first of all through curriculum like some university in taiwan okay and that through the general educations they act all okay the core curriculums all the freshmen, all the students should take is SDG and um, I mean, it's the SDG and AI. It means how exactly is that we could use these two things together? It means that the students, well, as soon as they enter into the university, they have this kind of where now the SDG becomes one of the competency and then they have to uh, gradually, gradually develop this kind of capacity in order to respond to all the challenges probably they're going to encounter after they graduate from university. And the second from the Taiwan's case is with some university that we, I said that they try through, through the internship programs Okay, so that the student realize, okay, and of course for those uh, employers, those industry really care about, they have done so for a long time about the SDG, response to SDG, and they integrated, uh, incorporated the internships programs into their curriculum system and also require the student, okay, they should participate in this kind of internship program. And another way that uh, some university, because due to their location or even uh, their limited resources or even some resources they got, they try to actually through the university social responsibility and to engage students, okay, into the community, local community, to that the, a student realize what exactly is that the local community or even is that the university actually around okay that the community around that the university really needs so that the student realize that okay um learning not just from within the campuses and through this kind of experiences and that they will really um, know what exactly is that the society needs and then also uh response to okay how this kind of capacity this kind of experiences it finally this corresponds to the sdg's goals in the end so this is the three modes actually we learn mostly but still have the other other interesting practices but there's a general in some university may use the different kind of the way to really encourage your student to really engage. But most important thing is we have to raise their awareness. They think that is very important. Yeah. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, now I'm conscious of time and I'd like to go and consider some of the comments and questions that have been posted in the chat. The first one from Scott, uh, Scott Blair, somehow we've addressed in uh, um, uh, when, when answering our first uh, a very first question around uh, the mission of qualitational agencies, but I'm I'm reading it because it is interesting. It touches upon some important issues. Uh, surely, what constitutes a quality education must change on a planet now under extreme stress due to human activities and unsustainable um, uh, attitudes and behaviors. What role and responsibility do quality assurance agencies, either public or private, have in nudging, if not requiring? universities to initiate an urgent and profound curricular transformation 
that redefines the very ethos and learning outcomes of students facing a harsh 21st century. Very well phrased. And somehow this is really what we've been uh, discussing uh, um, earlier on. Uh, but Scott, uh, um, I think, uh, uh, emphasized something very important, which is that uh, um, really is there quality if, uh, how can quality agencies safeguard quality if they're not safeguard relevance in today's world? So the remit around uh, um, for quality control agency to support SDGs, or well, at least a part of those, some of those SDGs, somehow is inherent in the responsibility to ensure that uh, students graduate with, uh, with relevant skills. Um, and that is a good way of, of looking at it. And this is also connected with another uh, comment, uh, uh, which, uh, which was posted by uh, Lali, uh, uh, um, it is indeed surprising that the integration of sustainability into quality assurance for higher education is still being questioned, considering the pressing need for educational institutions to adapt to evolving global challenges. Of course, institutional autonomy needs to be safeguarded and quality assurance should respect it. But on the other hand, if we agree that quality assurance is about accountability and relevance of higher education, then how are we going to ensure the relevance and accountability of HEIs if sustainability is not included in quality assurance standards of framework? So it's a very similar point. Uh, and, and these are all very well, um, uh, very well put. There is a question uh, specifically to CTI, um, to you Solange, um, which is, uh, I'm gonna go back to it. Um, uh, first of all, very complimentary. Great work, thank you. Go CTI. Uh, how well are uh, engineering uh, schools uh, doing in actually achieving these goals in uh, in France in this case? Yes, uh, if I may, I just wanted to come back on on, on Lali's uh, question um, and what you mentioned, Fabrizio. Um, of course, there's the role of quality assurance agency. And having it in the standards or framework is quite important. That's, I think, something that we all share around the table. But in the meantime, it's been, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years for quality assurance culture to be spread in our institutions, shared among quality assurance agencies, and accepted by actors. It's It hasn't been so easy. And we are now in a point where we have I think quite a balance with institutions, having a role of accompanying, being next to the institution, trying to explore new areas uh, for them and with them. But I would be very careful not to cross the line where that sh there should be protest from the institutions or perception of quality assurance agencies being the one adding burden, creating uh, administrative issues where we need really pragmatic um, solutions and very concrete actions from the actors. So there's really a line to me not to cross in that area, of course, having a route and contribute to the debate, exploring areas and so on, but not being prescriptive or um, too, too stressful to the institutions. This is one thing. The other thing concerning the direct questions regarding the um, engineering schools in France, Actually, they are doing quite well, and this is this is really a good um, a good point. They are really eager to to take their role in the um, in the drafting of solutions. They also see a direct input in two different areas. The more an institution will promote on social and societal or environmental responsibility, the more it might attract students, because this is something that students are now requesting, and they look at the strategy of the institution and also the course contents, and if they are looking for that specific field, they will find it and they will uh, join the institution. So see, this is one way at the, at the um, stage of admission, admission, and on the other way regarding recruitment, uh, we see uh, a link between um, direct recruitment of students and needs of the market in specific professions addressing the new global challenges. So the more an institution will be engaged in this, uh, the more uh, it will have links with the socioeconomic 
actors and facilitate integration of its students in the marketplace. So there is a win-win uh, situation. Uh, so this is one thing more related maybe to promotion than to content of the curriculum. And the other one is that um, th there is a clear acceptance in the engineering school that the role of the engineer in society is crucial. Maybe it's self-importance given uh, to to the to the profession and to the schools, perhaps. But they they, they feel it as having really a duty, a mission uh, to make sure that the engineer will be one one of them, one of the ones uh, dealing with these crucial issues in the future. So they are really eager to take part in it. Thank you, Solange. Uh, now, um, I think we're coming to uh, an end of um, uh, of a webinar, and uh, I'd like to conclude by um, asking each of you to um, to share some final thoughts, in particular, perhaps around the top tips that you would uh, um, uh, like to share with other quality assurance agencies on how to help embedding SDGs in, uh, in quality assurance standards and processes and uh, eventually with uh, uh, in our education institutions. Before doing that, so that you can gather your uh, your thoughts, I would like and only to, to thank you uh, already for uh, for your contributions today and, and thank the delegates for their, for their participations. But I'd like uh, uh, all, uh, uh, everyone, um, to remind everyone that uh, we are holding uh, our inquiry forum uh, in, uh, in Bucharest uh, later in June, which will uh, be a great opportunity to discuss these issues uh, in, uh, in in more depth and further, the theme of uh, the forum is in fact transforming society, social responsibility through quality assurance of ter tertiary education. So we hope to see um, uh, as many of you there in person to discuss these issues further. Uh, I'm going to check if there are any final comments or questions. No, so uh, let's do let's um, let's do a round of final um, uh, observations from our panelists. Let's start from you, Angela. Okay. Um, thank you for okay wonderful uh, webinar, and then we could learn each other, and also then a lot of great comments from our participants. So I just have the three things to share with at the end. So first of all, I think that as a QA agency, first of all. Uh, definitely you should have your mandate. And if you could have the clear guidelines under maybe the national uh, you know, framework or even uh, under uh, uh, relevance to the international standards or the guidelines, I think it's a very, very important things that the QA agency is supposed to do. And the second thing is the QA agency, though you have certain kinds of the standard framework or even very specific indicators for the institutions, but fitness for purpose always, it means our core value. It means you have to respond to different universities, um, their future, the characteristics, and then the resources they could have, and then to actually facilitate, okay, they could mainly focus on some uh, sustainability issues that, that properties could have more, uh, they could, they, 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 they actually could have the more and more uh, outcome result. And then finally, I still believe that if we really want to, as a QA agency, we want to really ensure um, that the quality of the sustainability reviews, I think that the data is very important. So, I mean, this is the issue that I found from all um, the interview is or even have QA agency. I mean, the crew also mentioned about how exactly we could have, no matter, okay, it's the institutional data, and then also we have the national data, or probably in Kwahi in a certain way, in, to some extent, okay, it could help us to see how well those kind of data from the different systems could be really incoordinated. Because, I mean, the different context, different system, different institution also hold that through, okay, the more comprehensive data, and then they will know what they, support, what they could do in the future. Okay, so this is what I learned today and I also want to share with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. That's great. Um, Isaac. Yeah, thank you. So just, just you know, a thought um, related to, to the talk. I think we, we are facing, we are facing global issues. Uh, uh, sustainable development is, is, is a really important matter globally. It's not something that we can treat, you know, nationally. So it's uh, everyone has to work on that. Um, I completely agree with Lali with her comments. So basically, she said, uh, "Why we are doubting that we have to have a look at what uh, higher education institutions are doing on this training for these professionals that we need to tackle these problems." 
Um, I think uh, we, we have different challenges. Uh, and one is this, so standard guidelines, I think they should highlight this importance, the importance of sustainability. Uh, I think this, this is something that, that we should do as soon as possible as, you know, global society. Uh, and the other, the other one is, um, I, I don't think we uh, as agencies should uh, work on auditing or on accountability. So what we have to do is go hand by hand with higher education institutions and encourage them to, to, to do the job that they have to do in this mission that they have, in this uh, mission of providing these professionals for, for not the future, but for the, for the present. And we have to do this uh, without stepping on, you know, autonomy and independence. That I think this is the most complicated thing sometimes that agencies have, uh, and that's that's you know the 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 idea. Uh, we well, I wanted to share now. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, Cairo. Fabrizio, thank you everyone for a wonderful sharing. I think I learned a lot today as well. Uh, and think uh, what is important for us is, uh, as mentioned by Solange, is not to dictate and you know to prescribe things to the institution and to add on to the already heavy burden of the institutions. So it's about uh, arranging, rearranging, you know, modifying, you know, and taking into account, uh, taking into consideration examples, questions, then. You know, content of the syllabus that you can actually incorporate elements of sustainability. So it's not something that, you know, we are adding adding, a, adding different subjects, adding, uh, you know, uh, the burden to the students. So it's all about, you know, incorporating all this into, into, the, uh, into the exercises, into the teaching and learning activities. Oh. And in order to do so, of course, lecturers have to be uh, well-versed with sustainability agenda. And we're talking about also about the employers and, and also, you know, um, the society out there. And uh, I think the good thing about what we have done so far when we talk about uh, implementation part on the national qualifications framework is that it encompasses all types of qualifications, all types of programs. We are not talking just about the formal uh, you know, programs under the universities uh, ranging from certificate all the way to the doctorate level, but we are also talking about micro-credentials because we are also incorporating this into partial qualifications. So we are talking about even adult learners uh, when they come into uh, short courses which are micro-credentials in nature. We are also encouraging these kind of courses to also embed and incorporate you know, a sustainability agenda. So hopefully with that, we can spread the word around, I mean, you know, the, the good practices around and everyone is aware and can contribute to making the uh, world a better place to, to live in. So I think that's all I can share for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cairo. Uh, Solange, the last word to you. Yeah, and I share many of the previous um, views that were already expressed and I really um, uh, stand with the colleagues. Um, Global issues mean global responsibility, that's for sure. And quality assurance agencies have to play their role, no doubt. But I think we really have to make sure that uh, it's fit for purpose and that we, again, not cross the lines. Uh, the, the main idea to me is really to confirm the role of quality assurance agencies in the community, uh, confirm the role, get trust and confidence in the agencies, which will help uh, the agencies to accompany uh, the needs for changes and to be next to the institutions working with hands um, and contributing that way uh, to the global needs. So thank you very much. And it was indeed really interesting to share with you. Thank you very much, Solange. And again, thank you again to all the panelists. I would say something that um, I seem to also get from uh, from your presentations, from uh, from your final words, is the importance, in particular, in order to uh, uh, walk that line between uh, social mission and uh, individual uh, institutional autonomy, to have uh, uh, a coordinated, inclusive approach where. Uh, for example, and the, the review of standards of of national standards, agency standards, is carried out in consultation with all the key stakeholders. Solange mentioned students, uh, employers in the presentation. That is key in order to 
uh, to make progress in, in a consensual way. Um, that's one of the messages also I um, I took from you today. So I'd like again to thank you all. Uh, it has really been informative uh, and I believe we will continue this conversation not only in Bucharest but uh, on other occasions. And I'd like to thank uh, the attendees uh, for, the, for their participation. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye.